Thank you for visiting the Coin Lady channel again. The Secoposed Ripples moved to strike fresh expert material yesterday, guys. Let me get this out of the way first. When you hear Ripple, it's essentially saying that the SEC lied about a specific witness to the judge. Judge Nembord's decision just so we're clear, when I say I'm not disgusted, I mean it in the sense that I think those attorneys from the SEC are up to no good. They are well aware that they are repeatedly stating falsehoods. I'm going to say it like I see it. However, it's clear that Ripple's attorney is considerably more professional. But listen, the court could find against the SEC for failing to comply with discovery rules if Judge Nepper determines that the SEC acted unlawfully here again. In regard to the implications, I will provide you with the complete summary. Since this is quite noteworthy, I will also provide a brief overview of it. Not only that, but it occurred earlier today. Story below this screen. This is a CNBC story. Chan Peng Zhao, founder of Binance, was given a four-month prison sentence following a plea deal. However, I must emphasize that I am not providing financial advice and do not possess any sort of financial experience. By the way, you shouldn't base any purchases or sales on what I say, okay? I'm merely an enthusiast who takes pleasure in creating YouTube videos pertaining to cryptocurrency, but I do it purely for leisure and enjoyment, damn it. You are free to leave at any time if you are unhappy. Okay, let's just quickly touch on this. See, I'm trying to get to the thing about ripples as soon as possible, but hold on a second. This was founded by Nance, a billionaire, following his guilty plea to charges related to his cryptocurrency exchanges facilitation of money laundering, CZ was handed a four-month prison sentence on Tuesday. You had the resources, the ability to pay, and the manpower to guarantee that all regulations were followed. Therefore, you blew that chance. Reuters states that U.S. District Judge Richard Jones delivered a sentence to the former Binance chief in Seattle Federal Court. This penalty was substantially lighter than the three years recommended by federal prosecutors. A five-month probationary period was requested by the defense. A jail sentence between 12 and 18 months was recommended in the sentencing guidelines. After four months, I will let you know if you are in compliance with the standards which state that 1218 hey, I mean, taking everything into account. The fact that CZ accepted guilt here makes me feel a certain way, though, so I will say it nonetheless. At this point, it appears that no ill will is there. What we have here is nothing like a Sam Venkman cooked. The thing is, he acknowledged guilt even if he didn't. Nothing bad has happened to any real Binance customers. In this same place, I have not seen any assertions to such effect. Though it's amusing to think about in that way. Consider once again the situation involving CZ, the former CEO of Binance. Clearly, he resigned, but this was a far different situation than SBF. That cucumber-loving skank is no stranger to you. Scott, that man is so young. The news has surely reached you. Clearly that malfunctioned a week or so ago. He has a 25-year prison sentence. A heavier sentence now, I regret not giving you more, but it's still not insignificant. Something is there. In any case, the calm persists. Excuse me. As reported by Reuters, Sao informed the judge before to being handed his punishment. It is my firm belief that acknowledging the errors in Zhao's alleged statements made earlier in court on Tuesday is an essential first step towards accepting responsibility. An effective anti-money laundering program was something I neglected to establish. Now I understand how grave that error was. Consequently, this is clearly a hot topic in the cryptocurrency community, especially on social media site X. Can you remember seeing this previous photo of CZ putting up four fingers? Well, he's sticking up four fingers because there's something behind this. Else as you can see on your screen, 
Chain analyst Will Clementi brought attention to the fact that Nance gets a $4 billion fine. I'll explain the meaning in just a second year, but it's interesting. CZ is sentenced to four months in jail. Here he is, fourthing it, since that's just his thing, illustrating that we all live in a simulation. Accordingly, the interpretations displayed on your screen essentially read as follows. Value or interest one of the many New Year's resolutions issued by Chain Things Out CEO after a tumultuous year in the cryptocurrency markets was to disregard Foot's dread, doubt, and uncertainty, as well as fake news and assaults on the financial sector. On January 2nd, CZ posted to Twitter to announce his intention to keep things simple in 2023 and focus on fewer activities. Education, compliance, product, and service were the first three items on his list. He then added a fourth, don't, which meant to disregard food, false news attacks, etc. Finally, he requested that his followers retweet this post in future tweets. Therefore, that is the meaning of it. What that meant is something I completely forgot. I seem to recall this from more than a year ago, but every time I look at his number four, I see that he's doing the same thing with his fingers. It's hilarious, because he got a four-month suspension, and a fine of about four billion dollars for Binance simulation. It's quite a coincidence, isn't it? I'm going to take it as a fact. That, or the judge's sense of humor is seriously off the charts. Next, we will go over the most recent developments in the Ripple case. With the most recent version to Ripple VC coup, court should reject Ripple's request to strike, sec once. In response to Ripple's request to strike Andrea Fox's declaration, the SEC has moved to dismiss the case. The SEC has reportedly opposed Ripple's request to strike, as disclosed in an update by seasoned defense attorney James K. filing. Following the court's previous scheduling order, the SEC filed the motion yesterday. Ripple moved the court last week to reject the SEC's opening remedy brief and the evidence and testimony that accompanied it. Top SEC accountant Andrea Fox gave the testimony, she had previously calculated a report based on Ripple's financial data, nevertheless, Ripple had previously described Fox as an expert witness, not a summary witness, as the SEC had asserted. Therefore, the cryptocurrency payment provider argued that the SEC ought to have presented her declaration during the discovery stage of the robot remedy case. It appears that Ripple is asserting that the SEC is attempting to pull another fast one. Plus, they are dishonest. Therefore, it wouldn't shock me in the least if this is really the case. Now that we're at the remedy stage of this action, though, the implications of this could be particularly consequential. The reason behind this is that, if something was meant to be addressed during the discovery period, which occurs early on in the lawsuit, and it is now being snuck in at the end, it is unfair. I will simply state this. The magistrate judge and Judge Nepper are currently reviewing this case. In essence, I consistently contact Judge Nepper, who is going to examine Judge Netburn, the one who delivered the severe critique during the course of the lawsuit. Judge Torres is the real ruling judge, but Judge Nepper will be looking over everything. Is that so? Show unwavering devotion to the rule of law. If it doesn't smell right, that judge is going to be the one to see it. So I wouldn't be surprised if she's not very lenient with them. But if she or they are attempting to gain additional information by deceiving the SEC, then it would be permissible. She will find out about that. In any case, the calm persists. Ripple countered the sex assertion that Fox is a summary witness by arguing that such witnesses cannot provide further testimony once discovery has concluded. Therefore, Ripple requested that Sarah Nepper, the magistrate, and Andrea Fox's expert papers be struck. The SEC reiterated in its most recent filing that Ripple's incorrectly identified Fox as an expert witness rather than a summary witness, and urged the court to reject Ripple's request. In my capacity as a witness providing summary evidence, 
The oversight body contended that neither Fox's testimony nor the report contained any opinions based on her specialized knowledge. The report just simplifies the presentation of Ripple's audited financial records in order to evaluate Annalisa Torres based on elementary mathematical processes, as stated by the SEC. The regulatory body went on to say that Fox did not offer an opinion on whether or not institutional clients incurred monetary harm as a result of their XRP purchases, instead only following the directions of its legal counsel. Important to this case is the question of whether Fox provides summary or expert testimony. The outcome will decide if the court will reject the Fox's claim. Well, that concludes our video. Like and subscribe as usual, and feel free to leave a comment with your opinions. Coming up shortly, farewell.